Hey, what's going on everyone? This video is on how to position a fire sprinkler head to avoid obstruction to discharge by spraying under the obstruction. This can range from an exit sign all the way to an I-beam. So let's get started and see how this works. In this video, we will be using the standard spray upright and pendant for all our examples. If you're using a different style head, here is a list of all the other tables for those heads. So make sure you use the correct table for the correct style head. And we are always measuring to the deflector. All right, here it is. The table 86512, positioning of sprinklers to avoid obstructions to discharge for the standard spray upright and pendant. In figure 86512A that goes with it. And if you look at A, it is the distance from the center of the fire sprinkler head to the side of the obstruction. And B is the vertical distance from the sprinkler deflector to the bottom of the obstruction. So let's just do a couple examples of how this works start off by taking a look at the top of our table. Less than one foot distance from sprinklers to side of obstruction, A. And moving over, maximum allowable distance of deflector above bottom of obstruction, B. So if we are less than one foot from the side of the obstruction, our deflector has to be below the obstruction to develop a spray pattern or it will be obstructed. Okay, now as our deflector moves above the bottom of the obstruction, let's look at our next example, up to two and a half inches. When that happens, the table is gonna give us a minimum distance away from the obstruction so we develop a full spray pattern and we're not obstructed. And this is simply how the chart works. The higher the deflector moves above the bottom of the obstruction, the further away the table is going to say the head needs to be. And it gives us our minimums. So we develop a full spray pattern and we're not obstructed. Now, if we can't get these to work, let's go over why and what we have to do. When using the beam rule, you have to keep in mind your distance below ceiling allowances and what hazard occupancy you are in. If you're moving your head further away from the obstruction, it could actually push you too far away from the opposing head. If this happens, you can't use the beam rule. So we'll put a head on either side of the obstruction. Sprinklers shall be permitted to be on opposite sides of the obstruction where the distance from the center line of the obstruction to the sprinklers does not exceed one half the allowable distance between sprinklers. So let's take a look at this example I made. We're in light hazard occupancy, max square footage, 225, max distancing, 15 feet apart. So half the max allowable distance would be seven foot six. We're gonna treat that I-beam, our obstruction, we're gonna draw a line right down the center of it and treat it like a wall. So we can be seven six off the center of our obstruction. And that's how you can handle a situation where the beam roll just won't work. So you put a head on both sides of it and treat it like a wall. And keep in mind, if that obstruction happens to be over four feet, you're going to have to have a head underneath it. That covers NFPA 13's beam rule, spraying under an obstruction. So I hope you learned something new. If you love the beam rule, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one.